Well, hello, good people. You know, I freely admit I'm kind of swaying off my original intentions of this channel. Initially, I wanted to cover more the creative sides of AI. So today we're going to cover Invoke AI's Unified Canvas. And I want to show you how you could take advantage of some basic concepts and techniques of out and in painting. So to start off, pick an image that you want to work with. Right click over the image. You're going to have several options here. We want to use Send to Unified Canvas. On the left side of the menu, you can see Unified Canvas here. And when you're doing out painting, you want as much workspace as possible. So if you like to have your gallery up, you could simply push it to the right or unpin it so that when you click on the workspace, the gallery will collapse. At this point, you want to look at your image and determine what it is that you want to do. When you're expanding the image, are there additional things you want to see? Do you want to remove certain aspects? So if we look at my image, a few things I'd like to do is finish off the top of this temple in the background. And it looks like we have some sort of structures on the sides here. I'm not sure if I want to keep them at this point, but we'll decide as we go. And I really like what's happening in the ground here. So we want to expand the look of this as well. Now, if you're new to Invoke AI's Unified Canvas, I'm going to explain this as we go. So here you have your bounding box. This is where all the images will be generated. You can manually set the dimensions yourself. If you hold shift and drag, it'll keep the aspect ratio. So if you look on the left there, you see both the width and the height are changing as I drag. Once I let go, it's more of a freeform style. To move around on the canvas, you can click on this button. Shortcut key is V. I personally love shortcut keys, so that's what I use. And to zoom in and out, if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you could simply scroll with your mouse. Very handy. As previously mentioned, I want to finish off this temple just to have a little bit at the top here. We're going to bring the bounding box up here just a tad. And typically what you want to do is you want to leave some of the image on this side of the bounding box because it will take into account the information on that image and it'll also take into account your prompt. You basically want to tell the AI what it is that you want to fill in in the spaces here that have no information. Since we're finishing off the temple here, I'm simply going to add in my prompt temple background. And I'm also going to generate four images. And as mentioned before, we're using Rev Animated. The other thing you want to take note of here is the denoising strength. The higher it is, the more creative it tends to be. But if you put it too high, it can easily sway away from your original image. And the lower it is, the more it will honor the initial image. We'll talk about that more later. For now, let's just generate the images. At this point, we're just working on the composition of the image. The little fine details we'll address later with inpainting. Since I generated four images, you'll see this little action menu pop up. And basically, you can toggle left to right to confirm which image you like. So let's look at the first one. Looks pretty decent. I like the look of this one, and it's got some structures in the background too. That one's cool. It's got some lightning. And the last one. Yeah, let's go with this one. I like that effect. So all you have to do is click on this check mark to accept the entry. Now, if we back off and look at the image, we've completed the top of that temple. And now we just have to continue on and finish off the rest. So at this point, I want to expand the structures here on the right and the left. Once again, in the prompt, I'm going to make the adjustment and put in temple ruins, rocky ground. And I'm also going to put in a denoising strength of 0.55. I don't want it to sway too much away from the original image. I find that's a pretty decent sweet spot. So I like what I'm seeing with this first one here. So I'm just going to accept that one. Let's finish off the rest of this side. Now, obviously, we're going to take care of the left side here and do the same thing. I will say this takes some patience, a lot of trial and error, especially if you have a weaker graphics card like mine with a 3060 Ti. I'm kind of digging this water effect happening here. That looks really cool. However, I do want it to look more like this where the ground is continuous. That one looks good too. Yeah, let's go with that one. Yeah, I like these random colors here that we're getting. We're going to accept that. Now this area is not perfect. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But again, we can fix that in painting later on. 
we have our composed image. There's quite a bit of cleanup we have to do. But before we go any further, let's save this to our gallery by going to the top menu here. This icon here, save to gallery or shift S. Once we open up our gallery, you're going to see it here. Let's take a look at the original image here and now the new version. Now we want to come up to the top here and upscale the image because we're going to work on the finer details now. And the reason why we're doing this is so that when we use in painting, we get the most detail out of the image. I'm not going to go through the differences here. I'm just going to use the real Essergen 4 plus. The anime version makes it too smooth. And then this version makes it too sharp. So this is a good compromise. So here's the upscaled version. And if I click on the magnifying glass here, you're going to see that the details aren't that great. Because we started at 640 by 832, we lost a lot of details upon the upscaling. But this is the final size we want to work with. So once again, we're going to right click either from the gallery or on the generation page here and send this to the unified canvas. And now I'm going to show you some in painting techniques to recover some details. All right, so moving along, let's zoom into the face here. Let's decrease our bounding box around the face. Let's make sure we get the hair as well. To work with in painting, we want to make sure we select masking options. We'll click on that and make sure enable mask is checked on. Shortcut key for that is H. You could even give it a color of your choice. Let's say we choose a bright red and you can play with the transparency here. I tend to leave it all the way up. And then you want to switch this from base to mask. We could even decrease this box a bit more here. And then we want to make sure we select the brush. So a shortcut key for that is B. And to increase your brush size, you can use the bracket keys. And what we're going to do here is mask the area where we want to change. So obviously we want to change the face, parts of the hair here. And as much as possible, you don't want to mask close to the edge. Otherwise, you're going to get unwanted seams. You could fix them later, but it's good practice to avoid the edges as much as possible. We're also going to bring the denoising strength up to 0.65. I do want the face to be changed a bit more. Let's open up infill and scaling. Currently, you see that it's on auto and you'll see the bounding box is limited to 896 by 640. So by selecting manual, we're able to increase technically the resolution. So the higher we bring this up, the more resolution we're getting theoretically, right? That will help bring out the details even more. The thing is here, my bounding box isn't exactly square. Let's make it one to one if possible. We can always do this part of the hair later. Otherwise, we'd have to scale this accordingly. A shortcut key to generate is control enter on your keyboard. And you'll notice as this generates, only the areas that we masked out is going to be affected. So as you see, we have much more details in the face. Let's take a look at the others. Yeah, I'm really liking that one, the blue eyes. This one's nice too. Ooh, I like that one. This one's got a bit more subdued eyes. This one looks more natural. We'll go with the natural look. We'll accept that. And shift C is to cancel the mask. So if I move the bounding box away, you see where I was saying we're not to go close to the edge. There's a seam here. I'm going to fix the seams in this area first. Oh, I almost forgot to change the prompt here. Since we're dealing with hair, I'm just going to put in hair. Uh, we don't need dynamic action pose. Let's generate those images. Now, obviously, because we enhance the details, the background is also enhanced. Once again, we can work on that. Don't worry about it. Let's take a look at our options. I like that. Uh, it kind of looks like there's blood drip in there. Pretty cool. So now we're going to work on the armor. We'll select V so that we can get the generation box here. Personally, I like to zoom in to be accurate. So I encourage you to do the same. Just going to get these areas here. We'll do the waist area here as well. Let's generate these images. Another way you can approach this is to do the upscale of the character first, work on the details and then do out painting afterwards. It really depends on what your subject. I'm really digging this version here. We're going to accept that. So I'm going to finish the rest off and speed it up in the video, but you can clearly see the benefit of doing in painting this way so that you can get as much detail out of your image as possible.
So I'll be honest, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would just because of the sheer size. My graphics card is chugging along, but I got the main character done. I'm going to work on the rest and I'll show it to you in the follow up video. So we're going to save this to gallery. Here's the before image without all the changes. I'm going to zoom in just a tad here to get a closer view of the image. Now let's look at the after. Here's the overall image. Now let's zoom in. And you can clearly see just from the character details that I pulled out, it's a much better image. And if I had time to do the rest, everything would look super sharp. Lots of details. This hand is quite tricky. I have to do some post-production to that. But I do plan on finishing this and I'll show you the finished result in the next video when I talk about using your own artwork combined with AI. That's definitely going to be something you don't want to miss. And if you happen to be new to Invoke AI, make sure to check out any one of these videos. Until the next one, I'll see you when I see you.